And Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with food, according to the number of their dependents. Joseph and the famine. Now there was no food in all the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished by reason of famine. Okay, now they did not have to include Canaan in there. These people aren't in Canaan, but they make the point that this was the right decision for them to move to Egypt. God directed. Do you see that? Because what's going to happen? We, we all know that they are going to be there for many, many years, and then they're going to be oppressed, and then they're going to be brought out by God. But the fact that it includes and Canaan says that God has directed this. They needed to be out of the land of Canaan because there's no bread there, and the only bread is in Egypt, and Joseph is in Egypt as the ruler of under Pharaoh, right? So do you see, when you see a word like that, and Canaan, it's totally unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Unless you're looking at the bigger picture, that God has directed this and that his plans are being brought about for a And, you know, if you think about it from this perspective, this is here to do one thing in the end. It is to lead us to an understanding of God's redemption through Jesus Christ. That is the, the ultimate goal of what's being said here. But in order to do that, he is making a picture of that 1,500 years before Jesus, right? And real people really suffered in order for us to understand this. Thousands and thousands of people multiplied and really were in bondage, all to make a picture about the coming Lord. That shows you the value of what God did in Jesus Christ. That he is willing to say these people are going to remain. He didn't, in other words, he did not have to direct a famine to have his people brought down to Egypt, right? All of this is here to show us the greatness of Jesus Christ. And the fact that all of these people suffered, all of these people were hungry, all of these people had to move their homes is to let us know that there is a greater cause than ourselves. Do you see what I'm saying? These people are real people, just like you and me. If we were down in Egypt and we're saying, why is all this bad happening to us? We're not seeing the bigger picture, right? We look at our own little world and we say, why did my puppy get run over today? Why did my dad have to die of cancer? Why this and why that? When there is a far greater picture of what's going on in the world. And we won't understand it until we go to heaven and until God shows us. So we can't sit here and wallow in our own misery when these people were real people just like us and God used them to make a greater picture of something that happened for the benefit of the whole world. Okay? Does everybody understand? I, th this is how I think about these things because I don't ever want to dismiss the fact that these people really were unhappy. And when they were taken out and put in the wilderness, they really wanted onions and leeks and all the things that their heart turned back for in Egypt. And we would too. And it just shows us how dependent we are on our stomach. And how our stomach is more important to us than obeying God. That's just the way it is. But God put those things in there to show us that Jesus is greater than our failings. Okay, go ahead. And Canaan. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan. In exchange for the grain that they brought and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. Okay, once again, he mentions and Canaan. He gathered up all of the money from Egypt and from Canaan. That is saying that Canaan had to come and continue to buy food from Egypt as well. So not only is Egypt becoming subservient to, uh, uh, to Pharaoh, but the people in Canaan are also giving wealth to Egypt, okay? Once again, it's just confirming that the right choice was made to bring Israel out of Canaan and to live in the land of Egypt, okay? But the people that are still in Canaan that aren't part of the covenant community had to get their bread from somewhere. So they are also going down to Egypt and they're buying grain from there, okay? And when the money was all spent in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? For our money is gone. And Joseph answered, 
give your livestock, and I'll give you food in exchange for your livestock. Okay, so first they got the money, now he's getting their livestock. Listen, I got to tell you all something. It just dawned on me. I was sitting here like this while you were talking. This has nothing to do with the Bible. Uh, if you see my feet are green sometimes, it's because I mow lawns barefoot. I mow a bunch of lawns. And then yesterday, I was appalled. I walked out of here, I looked at my toenails, and they were. Usually, what I do is I go home and I dump bleach all over my feet and I wash them until they're clean again. But. I, I sometimes I just don't think about it and I'm out mowing the lawn I come in here and my feet are green it's not that I'm dirty I never walk into my house with dirty feet but I, 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 I'm really self-conscious about that because you know I don't like to wear shoes but I, I also don't like to be dirty what's that? You bleach your feet? Oh yeah I just pour it in a, pu a puddle and I just sit there and I keep doing it until they're nice and clean so Oh I bet it is because I sure don't have any <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it does. Your white's whiter, and it also burns holes in my clothes because I always put in too much, and I've got these little holes that I have to throw clothes away all the time. But oh well. Okay, sorry about that. Go ahead. If your money is gone, so they brought their livestock to Joseph and gave them food in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the birds, and the donkeys. He supplied them with food in exchange for all their livestock that year. And when that year was ended, they came to him the following year and said to him, We will not hide from my Lord that our money is all spent. The herds of the livestock are my Lord's. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for food, <coughs> and we will, our land will be servants to Pharaoh. And give us seed that we may live and not die, and that the land may not be desolate. Money, then the livestock, and now they're even giving up their land. They're giving up everything. And it, once again, this shows you the severity of famine. And if you want to see a perfect picture of this, just look at Africa. You know, when there's a famine in the land, people end up giving everything to these tyrannical rulers, and they are multi, multi millionaire billionaires, and the people continue to wallow in misery. And nothing has changed. This goes on all the time in these little African countries. You see one ruler, and all of the people are subservient to him. It's because they have no land management, they have no way of supporting themselves, and this guy owns everything. It's just nothing has changed, okay? It's going to happen here. We have debt. Yeah. They're going to tax more and more. Yeah. There's nothing left. We become. We already have fifty percent of our nation that is dependent on the country, pays no taxes, and the fifty percent that do. Will the welfare president has come. And um, once those who pay no taxes outnumber the rest of us, they're going to vote themselves in. Us. All which is so what's happened in all over Europe we're following you know I was gonna bring that up just before I did and then I didn't the reason why is I always look over at Mary and she always looks so concerned when I talk about the doom that's coming always and I feel bad about talking about it. so I, but you brought it up so I don't have to feel I, we are we, we are coming to and look at look at how it used to be it, it will say in World War one and two there were 80% of the people in this nation lived in agricultural areas and 20% lived in cities. And it has done a complete reversal. We have 20% left in agricultural areas and most of them are not directly involved in agriculture. Very few people are in the agricultural environment. And the government is going to own everything. All of these big farms are continuously buying up the smaller ones and the smaller ones and it's becoming very, very, you know what, the one thing I say to myself and I say this all the time is I wouldn't live in a city, not for anything I wouldn't live in a city because I'm going to tell you, you talk about what happened just last uh, couple days ago and was it Wisconsin or uh, Michigan or where the black people just started beating up white people. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. They just started beating up white people. Uh, if, uh, if They were leaving a, a fair, a, a fair and the black people that were just there doing their thing um, there was a, like a mob and when the black people were done with the fair they'd get in their car and leave and nobody did anything but as soon as the white guy got in his car the black people would start beating on the car beating the people up pulling them out of the car and that is and I'm not making a, a black white thing but mob rule is the point I'm making that that is what is going to happen and I'm going to tell you what when this food stops going into the cities it is going to be mob rule and the the stronger 
are going to rule over the weaker. And no military in the world is going to be able to control this. They are going to have their own problems and their own food shortages. And we're going to have people coming at us from the outside. Unless we regroup as a nation very quickly and say we are going to unite, we're going to be utterly destroyed once this ball drops. And it could be the way things are going, it could be tomorrow. Oh. That, it, that's right, conquer and divide. Conquer and divide. No, it, it, oh, it, you know, and I don't mean to scare anybody. She brought it up, but she's right. This is where we are heading, whether it's, in, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's in five years, or whether it's in 30 years. It is coming to America. This mob rule is being encouraged. It's being encouraged. We've yeah. never had race relationships no. like this. No. Since, since maybe before. Exactly. And it's, it's being done intentionally. It, it is. It's being encouraged. This class warfare, the lower class. And look at what they said. Do, you know, I read this and I couldn't believe it. The black middle class in America, which was completely established, completely established, is gone. I think there's 2% left, and it was up at like 48% of the blacks were middle class. Mm -hmm. It is completely gone in the past two years. Intentionally. Intentionally. I, you know what? These people think that they are doing well by voting for this guy. Oh. He's one of us, and he's going to look out for us. He has done exactly the opposite. I, I, and this is not a political uh, Democrat, Republican thing here. This is the way it is. I could, when I read that, I could not believe it. Useful idiots. You know, they think that, I, oh, I feel so bad for the way things are going, and it breaks my heart, but, but you know. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the prophecies will be fulfilled. The Lord will reign. These the book is written. must come to pass in order for the end to come. And that's right. Yep. The book is written, and it says amen on the last page. So that's, you know, all of this that's happening in the meantime. We may see it come to pass. Oh, well, you know, I... I, I said it, 1948 is when the ball was really back in the court, and that was when Israel became a nation. Everything that is happening now revolves around that. And I, I, I will tell you my analysis of this before we get into the next verse, is that somebody said, um, Israel is God's timepiece. And I thought, you know, I don't like the way he said that, because that limits God to Israel. So I changed it just a little bit, and I said, Israel is proof that God has a timeline. Yeah. There's a little difference. In other words, God is in control, not Israel. God's not looking and saying, okay, it's time to respond now. He <laughs> is directing the nations, but Israel's proof that he is directing the nations. You and to What's that? You no, I don't get it anymore. That Charlie Rankle on there that <sighs> says all Christians should be liberal. Oh, yeah, right. Sure, you would say that. The Huckabee kept asking him, how can you get away with saying Jesus on the hot floor? Nothing to say, but if it was a Republican that mentioned Jesus, they'd be crucified. Right. Couldn't answer. No, he can't. It's just, and you know, the one thing, I almost wrote a note for Facebook, and I did, and I thought, I, you know, I, I don't, everybody knows what I think. But over the budget made up crisis that we went for the past three weeks, how many times, how many times did you hear anybody bring in Jesus? Once. You did? I didn't. Oh, I'm just talking about Rick Perry in the past. Oh, well, yeah, but that was after the budget crisis, and it's, it's based on, you know, him asking the nation to repent. But I never once, and I watch C-SPAN from time to time. I just sit and watch them do their, their orders, you know, and all that. Never, never once did I see anybody invoke the name of God in this crisis. Instead of saying, you know, let's ask the Lord to direct this process the way Benjamin Franklin did with the Constitutional Convention, Nobody, not a single person said, we need to ask the Lord's blessing on this because we are heading down the wrong... Back to the 40s too. Yeah, that's right. Separation of Separation. State, which yeah. doesn't exist. That's right. Oh, it, it, very, very sad. But as she said, hallelujah and amen. It's all coming, but it's not unknown to us. Anyway, please, go ahead. What's that? She's raptured, yeah. Yeah, she just got raptured. <laughs> She's no ladies around. Yes. So Joseph, <coughs> so Joseph bought all of the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For all the Egyptians sold their fields because the famine was severe on them. The land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he made servants of them from one end of Egypt to the other. Only the land of the priest he did not buy, for the priest had a fixed allowance from Pharaoh 
and lived on the amounts that Pharaoh gave them. Therefore, they did not sell their land. Okay, now in verse 21 it says, um, read 21 again. As for the people, he made servants of them from one end of Egypt to the other. Okay, now, or there are, it's a different textual tradition that will say, he made servants of them. Another textual tradition says that he moved them into the cities. 